Hi, and welcome to This Week in Bobcat Athletics. I'm Craig McPhail. What a great week we had. It was Easter break for a lot of our students, but not for athletics. We were competing for tennis and men's lacrosse and women's lacrosse. We had a softball game earlier in the week. Just a lot of action happening here, and we talk about this each week. I hope that those who are watching this show get a chance to come out and watch the Bobcat Athletic Department in action. I think you're going to see some quality young people and really great coaches who are making a difference within the community. But as we go through the show today, you're going to get to hear from Coach Fletcher, and Chris is going to recap the week. And it's, it's just another good time. It's spring in Banner Elk. It's Avery County at its finest. And we hope you get a chance to come out and watch some of our young people in action because you will see really what Bobcat Nation is all about. Stay tuned for more of This Week in Bobcat Athletics. Welcome back to This Week in Bobcat Athletics. I'm Sports Information Director Chris Parker here with Coach Lee Fletcher, head coach of our cross-country teams and our track and field teams. Coach, thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, let's go back a couple weeks. Indoor conference championships, you earned uh, two golds with Christian Lloyd and Aaron Bingham. Talk about their performance and just the teams in general. Well, it was, uh, it was a good uh, beat for us, uh, particularly on the guys' side, uh, you know, Christian Lloyd. Uh, Winning the pole vault on his last attempt was pretty exciting. I about jumped out of my shoes for sure when that happened. Um, uh, we got a top five finish on the guys' side. Um, that's kind of what we strive to do. We always try to stay within the top five in the conference, and we, we were able to accomplish that. So I thought it was really good. It was a good performance on our guys' team for sure. Um, Aaron, of course, uh, just, a, just a stellar hurdler. Mm -hmm. um, the last three years, I believe she's won um, two. She's won two indoor tie or the last yeah last two three years she's won three indoor titles and uh, two outdoor titles and was runner up one year in the 100, 100 meter hurdles so she's uh, done very well school record holder for us uh, that type of thing and she's pretty much the leader of our girls side for Congra sure congratulations on your successes there touching on pole vault uh before christian lloyd evan webb kind of ran the conference as well then chris has come in and done the same thing Where's your success come from with your pole vaulters? I think it started back in the early 2000s when we first uh, started uh, the conference, uh, Carolina's uh, first added track and field mm -hmm. as, as a uh, sport. Um, started back with uh, um, John, uh, John Arthur was actually our uh, first All-American in the pole vault. Mm -hmm. uh, and it went from there. Uh, then Evan Webb saw, saw his success and uh, contacted me, and I went and saw him jump quite a bit. And then, uh, of course, he qualified for the indoor national meet. And from there on, we, it's kind of been a tradition that we've always had uh, pole vaulters um, with, our, with our facilities and everything that have, have uh, really wanted to come and jump, those type of things. Um, just, just a really good tradition of pole vaulters here. That's one of our better events for sure. And you do kind of have a, a little bit of a, a trick up your sleeve with Luke Carson, who's your guys' trainer, but he also <laughs> pole vaulted at Duquesne as a Division One athlete. That's true. What does he bring to the table, not only in keeping your kids in shape, but just kind of advice that he gives to them at meets? Well, you know, whenever Luke can uh, come, it's always a plus. Uh, it's almost like having a trainer uh, plus a uh, another assistant coach mm -hmm. out there that he, he can he sees things that maybe I can't see or Coach Tilly can't see. Um, they do have a, a very good uh, coach down in Charlotte too mm -hmm. that works with them, Coach Morrell. Um, that helps us out quite a bit. So he, he deserves a lot of credit also for those guys. And speaking of you guys performing well, uh, your last two weekends you guys have been just top of the charts. Uh, 32 top 10 finishes at Lenore Rhine. Yeah. Turn around and have another successful weekend at High Point. Uh, can you just talk about some of the student athletes that you think have just have performed well or have kind of surprised you with their performances? Well, so surely this weekend um, at Winthrop, uh, Tyree Reed running 10 7 6, placing third, you know, making the finals, placing third overall in the 100. And uh, also running uh, 21 8 9 and uh, placing uh, fourth overall in the 200. A big uh, D1 invitational was pretty mm -hmm. impressive. Um, Cody McNeely is way ahead of where he was last year, placing 10th overall in the 800. I thought was really, really impressive with his uh, 156 performance mm -hmm. in that. Uh, we're looking for big things out of him. And of course, uh, Christian Lloyd again, uh, he got another PR at Winthrop this weekend and placed sixth overall in the uh, pole vault, which was great. On the girls' side, Aaron Bingham uh, ran under, under 15 seconds uh, in the 100 meter hurdles. Um, 14.96, which uh, has put her, I think, right at the tops of the uh, conference right now. So, mm -hmm. right now, you know, 
on the girls and guys side. Um, I think the 100 and 200 were sitting um, we're sitting uh, second on the conference list. We're sitting uh, third on the conference list in the 800. We're leading uh, the conference list um, in the um, gosh the <laughs> the conference. We're also leading the conference list mm -hmm. um, in the four by four hundred and the pole vault right now. So um, things are looking really well um, that way. The guys look like they're going to getting really strong coming into the conference championships for sure. And uh, speaking of, of student athletes that have, have come a long way, you talked about Cody McNeely. Uh, there's a trio, uh, we, we touched on them in the cross country season, but they seem to just be continuing their success through the year with the, the twins, Sean and Lane Graves, and then Austin Thompson. How have they progressed from when they first got on campus to, I mean, the last few weeks, you know, they're running top 20 times in these right, big events. Right, right. Um, well, Sean and Lane came in. I, I believe one was running um, in the 5K. He was more, he was 1650s and his brother was low 17s. Mm -hmm. And now both of them are uh, running low 16s in the 5K right now. Hopefully they'll get under that. Austin, of course, he did go under 16 his high school uh, senior year in, in cross country 5K. And he's uh, getting really close. He ran 16-13 this weekend. Nice. And we're hoping in the next couple of weeks we can get him under 16 minutes. Um, the one thing that did surprise me about Austin is he ran a uh, top 10 time on the conference list in the 1500 oh, this weekend, nice. which he's never run the 1500 before. So that may be one of his events mm -hmm. coming up in the future. So that was that was a pleasant surprise this weekend to see that. Speaking of events that are in the future, it's one that we kind of hold true to here at Lee's McCray. We host the Conference Carolinas Outdoor Track and Field Championships. What does that mean to you as a coach to, one, not only be able to have your kids on display in front of the home crowd, but just to have such a large event on your home campus? Well, it's great. It draws a lot of people from the community uh, out. And they can see our great facilities. I think it's a great recruiting tool. Um, kids across the uh, southeast have recruits that actually come and watch the meet that way. So I, I think it, it helps. I think it helps all our sports and draws, draws a lot of kids, uh, recruits, kids, community. Um, and to watch and uh, check out our really nice facilities for sure. All right, Coach. Well, thank you for dropping in and spending time with us. Coach Fletcher's teams are going to be traveling down to High Point this weekend. They were at Winthrop last weekend. So uh, thank you for dropping in. We wish them the best of luck the rest of the year, and they will host that conference championship that we talked about in about a month, and we'll kind of catch you up on that as it draws closer. And we'll be back shortly with more in This Week in Bobcat Athletics. Welcome back to this week in Bobcat Athletics. We're going to recap the week that was and the week that will be. It's that time of year again, folks, where we are very busy, a bunch of sports going on. Let's start off with softball. They finally got to play at home after 24 games on the road. They dropped a doubleheader to Emmanuel. Very exciting second game where the tying run was on base in the bottom of the seventh. However, the Bobcats came up a little bit short. Uh, due to weather, their doubleheader against Erskine has been postponed, and that will be played on April 19th. Uh, this coming week, Bobcats have a pretty busy weekend. They head to Belmont Abbey on Saturday at 2 and 4, and then they'll be here on Sunday at 2 and 4 against Mount Olive, and we hope you can come out and catch them in action. Uh, the tennis teams were pretty active last weekend. Both teams lost 8-1 to one to decisions to Lee University on Friday, and then they jumped right back into conference play on Saturday. The men dropped a, a pretty tough one. Uh, they're dealing with a little bit of injuries right now. The women's defeated King 6-3, to three, so tip of the cap to the women's team as they pick up their first conference win of the year. Men's lacrosse went on the road and played against a very tough number 15th ranked Belmont Abbey, and they fell in that decision. And they, but they turned around and came back and pe beat Point University 16 to six. And let's te check out some highlights from that action. Hey, go right, go go right, 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 go right
And the Bobcats are going to travel to North Greenville on Tuesday, and then they will be back here on Saturday as they play Young Harris at 12 o'clock. Uh, the men's volleyball team dropped a game against Erskine 3-0. Erskine is one of the top tier teams in the conference, so a tough loss there. The Bobcats will be back in action. They travel to King on Wednesday, and then they're here this weekend, so be sure to come and check them out. They play 7 o'clock on Friday against Coker, and they turn around and play Limestone at 3 on Saturday. Both these matches will be taking place in Williams Gymnasium. Uh, we saw Coach Fletcher. We talked to him about the track and field successes there. Plenty of good results. Uh, they had 17 top 16 finishers. You can find the results on our website. Um, women's lacrosse had a big, big game against Converse. You saw us talk to Coach Lexi King last week. They won that 10-7. to very good performance by the team all around. Sophomore Peyton LeCompte was named Conference Carolina's Player of the Week due to her success in that game where she scored five goals. So the women's team is trending in the right direction. They will travel to Wise in Virginia tomorrow, and that game is slated to start at 6. And then they're going to hit the road and go down to Erskine on Saturday, and that match is going to start at 2. So a lot going on right now. Uh, for any results, statistics, or schedules, just go to our website at lmcbobcats.com, and we'll be back with Coach McPhail to wrap things up. On Saturday night, after men's lacrosse had a, had a convincing win and women's tennis beat arch rival King in, in a big conference Carolina's tennis match, I went over to Rough Ridge over on the Blue Ridge Parkway, hiked up there for a bit, went out onto a rock and looked over the Pisgah National Forest and thought about just how blessed we are here in the high country. Uh, I, I personally did some reflection to see an athletic department that's on the move. It's got great momentum. We've seen it with the success of men's soccer in the fall to men's basketball in the winter. And now we're watching it with wins by men's and women's lacrosse, player of the weeks for those sports. Uh, uh, we're watching tennis start to gain a little momentum. Softball's being competitive. And I thought about the difference that we're making. I thought about just how beautiful this area is. And if I'm a 18 to 22 year old that's coming to play sports at Lees McCrae and earn a college degree, what better environment? What more safer environment? What more of an opportunity to really develop as a student athlete? The focus can be zeroed in on the grades, academics, the classes, the practices, the conditioning, and the games. And that really narrows it down. And then you can just really become a well-rounded human being. I hope you get a chance to come watch us. I hope you want to get engaged. I'd love for you to join the Bobcat Club. Make a difference. Be an impact player like we talk about because it will go a long ways and the reward is everlasting. So that's all for this week in Bobcat Athletics. Stay tuned for more.